Hey, everybody. Welcome into the Film and Whiskey Podcast. I'm Bob Book. I'm Brad G. And we're coming at you with another special bonus episode. Mm, bonus episode. Brad, we have a really special episode planned today, and it's it's something that we've only really done, I think, once before. We're just basically putting the spotlight on a brand today. And I think from the get go, there's already people listening to this that are like, oh, my gosh, like they're doing sponsored content. First yeah. of all, no, we're not like this is <laughs> we're not being paid anything for this. We just kind of stumbled across this brand, reached out and said, hey, what are you about? And then after learning what they were about, we said, all right, come on our podcast. Yes. So we have not been paid anything by this brand, but we have been sent some product to try live on air. And we're also joined by their CEO and founder. And the brand in question today, Brad, is called Blind Barrels. This is a subscription service that sends you whiskey in the mail. And hey. I mean, I'm sold already. But yeah. here's the thing that they do that's unique. They send you four samples of whiskey in a quarterly box that you subscribe to. So you get it every three months unless you sign up for like a one off. But the idea is every quarter you get a box of whiskey. There's four samples in it and they're just labeled A, B, C and D. You, there's no other information about it in the box. And as you try them. You go onto their website, they give you a special code, and after you taste them, you take your notes on them, each one is revealed to you. And it's a great way of uh, introducing yourself to some of America's best craft distilleries. And that's what we're going to do on the podcast today. We're joined by Bobby DeMars, who is, as I said, the CEO. Bobby's been very patient sitting over here watching us talk ourselves to death. Bobby, how are you doing today? Fantastic. Thank you so much for having me on the show. It combines my two favorite things in the world, whiskey and film. So like I said, we're going to jump in and drink all four of these samples live on air with Bobby walking us through the process. And you've already kind of teased it a little bit, but you are one of our few guests that has had one or both feet in, in both of our preferred industries here. You're a filmmaker and also a CEO of a whiskey company. So let's I mean, let's talk a little bit about your background in the film industry. Walk us through, uh, you know, all the all the Oscar winning films that you've directed and starred in. I, I see the shelf behind you just like covered in Golden Globes and Emmys and everything else. So walk us through it, man. Well, uh, yeah, I've won so many awards that uh, <laughs> look, I'll tell you what, if anybody out there has ever made a film, um, it's really difficult. And I've been lucky enough to make a few. And uh, so I, I went to USC on a football scholarship. Um, I was the first player ever there uh, to get into film school there. And when I got out, I started producing um, or at least attempting to produce because I think I just need a good idea. And someone needs to listen to what I'm doing. That's all I need to do. Someone needs to hear my pitch. And that's not really <laughs> how it works, unfortunately. And there's a lot of components. And at the end of the day, you got to get really lucky. Uh, and then I branched out into doing some screenwriting and you have to develop a lot of material. And um, I was a partner in the company that made a movie called Talk to Me, um, which was really the first African-American art house film mm -hmm. um, before Precious. It broke the mold mm -hmm. in, the, Absolutely. in terms of the demo of who watched that film that had Martin Sheen. And yep. um, it was it was really Don Cheadle and Chuta, Aji Ford, Taraji Henson. Um, and it was a great film. And um, I had a credit, Rob, from the film at the last second um, by the guy that wrote the check for the movie. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I learned from that. I uh, made a documentary that Don Cheadle narrated for PBS um, called Adjust Your Color. And then, you know, what happens when after you make a film is you try to make more. And it was so hard to get films made that I said, you know what, I'm going to go out and make a film that I know I can make, that I have access to aspects of it, and then I have a unique perspective on. And I made one called The Business of Amateurs. Uh, it came out in 2016 that focused on college athletes' rights. Um, so the money and the disparity and the gap that exists from the money that comes in to what the athletes get, the academic integrity or lack thereof uh, within the system. And then the medical side of it, obviously, the CTE, the chronic traumatic encephalopathy mm -hmm. that's still uh, been pretty newsworthy. And um, we were lucky enough. To, that was, uh, I'll tell you, making a bio doc about a guy that's dead, um, which is what a gesture color was about a radio DJ was easy in comparison to this. <laughs> You know, that that film, you know how the movie ends. If you want to mess with anyone making a documentary, ask them how the movie ends. And, um, you know, it was, <laughs> it, it was a labor of love. We shot 73 days in 23 cities. And um, we actually made a pretty big impact with the film. Um, I'm on the oversight committee of the board of a nonprofit that oversees college athletes' rights. Um, we utilized the snippets of the film to create a bill in California that then was replicated in 12 other states for NIL, which is mm -hmm. named image and likeness rights mm -hmm. for athletes. And um, 
that competition was the fastest way to change everything. And it got to the Supreme Court last summer. And now, you know, your favorite school, their athletes can now make money from their name, image, and likeness in that short interim that they can actually trade on that value. Um, and then, you know, the quarantine hit and, um, you know, I think a lot of businesses dried up and in the film industry, if you're not a heavy hitter, if you're not, you know, Soderbergh and Spielberg and, uh, you know, Wes Anderson, like you guys have been doing episodes on recently, it's really hard to get a movie made, even for big directors. And, um, you know, during that little lull, my buddy was doing blind whiskey tastings and I'd done with wine. I'd never done with whiskey before. And I was like, this is awesome. You know, I loved just the, yes, the communal aspect, great whiskey is meant to be shared. You guys do it every episode. Um, you know, really kind of opens up conversation a little bit, but I love talking about the nuances of each sample and what we were getting out of it and the learning component of it. And obviously you have a little fun because you're getting a little bit drunk and you're doing that too. Um, <laughs> and so I said, I'm going to figure this out. And uh, it, it took me a long time. You know what I discovered, if anyone ever needs a lawyer, you can usually do a free hour long consultation with one. And um, so I called up an ABC attorney who alcohol beverage control. He said, you can't do any of this. And I went, OK. And then I did 16 more of those calls with different attorneys until I gleaned enough information to figure out how we could legally put other whiskey into bottles with our branding and be able to distribute uh, to the 42 states that we're in. And then a year to get all those elements in place after we created the company and we launched in January. And, um, you know, we've been growing pretty, pretty quickly. And yeah. like you said, we showcase craft brands, you know, so I think the parallel between the business of amateurs is really about showcasing and highlighting the disparity in the gap of these athletes that create a lot of money and opportunity for their programs and don't have it themselves. And in the, in the whiskey world and, and really spirits in general, I mean, prohibition never really ended. Um, there's a lot of bureaucracy, you know, there's a lot of brands that are making the best whiskey you've never tried that you can't get because they can't get a distributor to put them on the, sh on the store mm -hmm. shelves. Cause there's 3000 brands and there's 200 spaces. Right. Mm -hmm. And so when we created this model, we weren't like, Oh, let's put makers, Mark and Mickers and Jack Daniels in the lineup. Well, there's nothing special about that. And um, not everybody in craft is making good stuff, but of the ones that are, um, that we think are worthy of trying. Um, yeah, we wanted to showcase them. And what better way to do it than in a blind tasting where you can remove your bias that you have? I mean, we do with films too, right? Like we want a film to be good because this, I wanted artificial intelligence to be awesome because it was Kubrick was supposed to make it. And then Spielberg, right. and I'm like, come on, this is going to be awesome. And I was like, uh, he's running around with a prostitute robot. I don't know if I'm so, <laughs> but <laughs> listen, it took you nine minutes to, to get from hello. How are you to prostitute robots? And that's what we appreciate about having guests like you on our podcast. I got to say real quick, Brad, you've barely spoken yet. And I promise we're, we're going to let Brad talk, but he's, he's over here chomping at the bit to get into this box. Bobby, I can tell that you have such an incredible focus on what this brand is about, because every question I had written down to ask you about the relationship between film and whiskey and the relationship between your work in the film industry and this brand, you've already covered it all. Like the business of amateurs, the connection there, you've already drawn those lines. So I think, honestly, let's dive into drinking these four whiskeys and, and any other questions that we might have, I think we'll throw in here during the tasting experience. Brad, you've opened up your box. I'm opening up mine now. Can you explain to our listeners when you get a box from Blind Barrels, what comes inside of it? Yeah, well, first off, it is the cleanest aesthetically looking boxes I think we've ever received. You know, and we've received a lot of different marketing promotional materials. This box is gorgeous. It's simple, elegant. There, the the black with gold is like classic. And then you open it up, and everything in there just is streamlined to fit the process of a blind tasting. There's nothing extraneous. There's nothing that is unnecessary. There's no unnecessary marketing in there. Mm -hmm. All of it is there to help you enjoy your experience of blind tasting for whiskeys. And I think that's what I really appreciate about it. I was telling, I, I opened our uh, conversation with Bobby before we started recording by basically just saying, this is a kick-ass product, man. <laughs> Thanks, man. You know, it's funny, the, the box, it's almost like you feel guilty if you throw the box away, right? Mm -hmm. So look, you can you can remove that foam and you can put your weed in there. Biden's going to allow that. <laughs> uh, you know, there's all sorts of... Uh, 
I think ways that we, we're trying to have a contest to see which subscriber comes with the coolest way to use the box because, yeah, we put a lot of thought. We we want people to associate top shelf, um, just just idea that, with their brand. We want them to mm-hmm. think of these things as something special because they are. If we just threw a bunch of plastic bottles with some corrugated samples into a thing and said mm-hmm. you figure it out, well, then you're going to associate it with that. So that was important right. to us to make sure the experience was top shelf. Yeah. And I'll, I'll say that the the tasting table that you send along with it is really an excellent opportunity to – it gives people an introduction on how to start to develop your palate. But I wouldn't say that it's overwhelming with like, you know, 200 different tasting notes. And I think that's what I appreciate about it. It's just enough to make you go, oh, yeah, this is in the herbal realm. Mm -hmm. And let me start thinking about what a specific herbal note might be. But as you become more advanced with tasting and, you, you know, you do enough of it, you start to develop your own tasting wheel that's, you know, moves on from what you guys have to offer. But I think what I'm trying to say is this is great for beginners to veterans in the world of tasting. Yeah, you know, a lot of the look, I still consider myself somewhat of a whiskey novice. I've learned I learned, I know more about liquor laws than I do about whiskey, I'd say. <laughs> and uh yeah, I'm more of a film veteran in terms of talking about that. I think that's what I, a lot of what I like about your show, and I'm listening to you guys that when you're breaking down a film and what's good and what's bad, what you're talking about is accessible to somebody that's a novice, but you're also hitting on people that really are kind of film nerds. And we're trying to do that with this box too. And the tasting table, yeah, we've reinvented the wheel. The wheel is normally the tasting table. And I was always annoyed by turning that thing. And our box is rectangular, so we just created something. But it's meant to jar your memory on like, ooh, am I getting this? And yeah. uh, although we did have somebody who bought it for their spouse and the person was like, well, he has a nut allergy. And does that mean, and I'm like, there's no nuts in this whiskey. There's otherwise it wouldn't be whiskey, but uh, there's also not leather in this whiskey and there's not uh, stringents, you know, <laughs> things that are actually listed on there. This is just what your senses are telling you. <laughs> well, on well, that note, uh, yeah, I was going to say, let's dive I'm, in, I'm ready to drink, man. So I've poured out sample A here in my glass, Brad. And, and uh, let me say this as we start nosing. I took a class about a year ago in my, my MBA program about product design and user experience. And the you know, one of the big things was like users love it when businesses gamify things, when there's like an aspect of I feel like I'm playing along here. And that's kind of what this tasting table does for me. Like I'm trying to pick out what what I'm getting here, but also, you know, I want to see what the ABV on this is. I want to know if it's low proof or high proof. And so it's like you're playing a game against yourself. And Brad, I kind of want to play a game against you here. And I want to see, like, <laughs> as we get these things revealed to us, which one of us is closer. And let's let's keep tabs on these four whiskeys. As long as it doesn't turn into our college dorm room playing uh, Ken Griffey Jr.'s Major League Baseball against each other, yep. I, I think we'll be safe. All right. So what are you getting on the nose here, Brad? Because, I, I mean, I get a ton of cinnamon on this. I get a ton of baking spice. Uh, at first, it smelled just a little bit young. But that's kind of dissipated out of here now, and it almost has a really nice, you know, honestly, it, it kind of smells like the Rebel bourbon that I love so much. Like it has a, a nice, almost weeded bourbon smell to it. Yeah, I was going to say the first note that I took was wheat, and then I almost crossed it out because I was like, I can't quite place if it's rye or wheat. And and I think it has some of those baking spices, a, a little bit of clove, a little bit of cinnamon. For me, though, after sitting with it and letting it open up, I almost got a little bit of orange and a little bit of honey coming through as well. Yeah. It it kind of reminds me of a rye whiskey that feels like a little bit of a bright Irish whiskey. Oh, interesting. So the box that we're going through is actually the March release from Blind Barrel. So anyone who subscribed back in March, you've already known what these whiskeys are, but it might be fun to hear us talking about them now. Uh, on the taste, Brad, I'm getting kind of the same thing. A, a little bit more. I couldn't tell if it was a wheat or a rye. And that's like, honestly, I should be able to tell by now. But when I don't know, like I'm, I keep second guessing myself. I really like this. It it just tastes again. It has a little bit of the craft thing going on where it's just slightly a little youthful, but definitely not as much as some of the more recent craft whiskeys we've had. This is pretty well rounded. I'd be kind of shocked if this wasn't like at least four years old. 
And you guys, I like that you mentioned that. Like, yeah, like you want to play a game. Like you're like Jigsaw, <laughs> Bob, that you're gonna when you're gonna wake up and saw your foot off. It's the only way that you can get through all these whiskeys. Um, that there is this game component. And yeah, I mean, I we do this, we only test things blind. We don't push brands that we want to be in the lineup. We literally uh I have my whiskey wizards or our spirits guides as we call them, and everything we do is completely blind, and we go through it and we're wrong about stuff all the time and this is a bourbon um out of vail colorado called 10th mountain and yeah i think you picked up on that you know that cinnamon um there's that baking spice that comes in and what's what's so hard to pinpoint on this one first of all they're in a climate that gets really hot really cold mm. and so you know the, the, it's not age stated because they have they mix various ages one two three and even older barrels together in order to kind of create this unique taste um and it's and it is something that a lot of people can't pinpoint because um, I think because of that age statement that it's hard to tell what it is. It's mixing all these different things. We don't like to think that young is bad. Um, you know, our June lineup, we had a 15 year rye matured in a Weller barrel. Um, wow. You know, we just had an eight year uh, malted rye. That's maybe one of the best whiskeys I've ever had um, made by one of the best craft uh, distillers you've never heard of in the country. And every single lineup is actually getting better and better and better. You know, and if we do more of these down the road, I'll, I'll give you boxes to kind of keep you guys guessing. But yeah, this is this is um, uh, a guy named Ryan Thompson out in Vail, Colorado. And, um, you know, we knew we had to have a bourbon in the lineup and we wanted to start with the bourbon. People were probably going to be complaining if they didn't get one. And I think what's important to note that, you know, if somebody wants to get a bottle of this, a full bottle of this, we sell it for the same price as if you're at the distillery. Yeah. Um, some of the bottles in these lineups actually have gone for two or three times their MSRP from the distillery in the secondary market. Um, you know, we have a bottle right now. It's a $150 bottle at the distillery and we're selling it for 120. And so all of these brands that, and they're not going to make this one bottle anymore. So in a few years, it's going to be worth about three times that amount. Um, so I think the coolest thing about the club besides the experience is actually access that, yes, you would never be able to try this brand probably any other way. Um, some of these, you know, aren't, you can't get them um, at, at your total one or your A lot of these, usually three out of the four samples are rock stars within 50 miles, but you wouldn't be able to buy or try them any other way. Uh, this was really, really good. And it was a high rye bourbon, not a high wheat bourbon. So I was wrong on that. Only 92 proof, but damn good. And Brad, as we get into sample B, I'd love to know what you think of this one on the nose. Yeah, this one I'm starting. I feel like I pick up a little bit of tobacco. Um, hmm. There, there is some. Um, hmm. I'm trying to look at the tasting table while I'm speaking and <laughs> sniffing. I, you know, I'm getting some of what you're talking about, but it also smells like. Do you remember the uh, the bubblegum flavored medicine that you got yep. when you were a kid? Yep. Like the stuff that looked like Pepto Bismol. Like it it smells like that. You know, Bobby just said, Oh, we know we needed a bourbon in here. So like now I'm thinking, oh, maybe it's not a bourbon. Maybe it's some sort of like malt whiskey or uh, man, it's hard to do these blind, isn't it? Yeah, bl I will say with the experience of drinking all of our whiskey not blind and knowing so much going into it, blind tastes are are like stressful for me. I <laughs> This one, I, I take a sip and I get a little bit of honey. All right. I'm going to go out on a, on, on a limb here and say, I don't think this is a rye whiskey. It just doesn't smell or taste like rye. It has the spiciness of a rye on the back. And it has some of that like vegetal thing that we get sometimes with craft rye. But it just tastes. I almost want to say this is like an exotic grain. You know what I mean? You remember how. um. Spelt. Water, watershed used to use spelt. Yeah. Yep, like, yep. <laughs> I wonder if this is like some weird strain of corn that's not usually in bourbon or I don't know, man. But uh, I'm going to say that I think this is a malt whiskey and I'm probably very, very wrong. Watch it be a rye. I think that this is a rye and I think that it's around 88 to 92 proof. All that's right. my guess. Let's see the reveal here. The reveal. This is a 100 percent. Wheat whiskey, ah, not right. From, <laughs> but but also look, is, not a rare. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna say I, I kind of had the odds on my side because it was like rye versus the field. 
like of every other grain it could be. <laughs> and I, was like, I'll take that. I mean, sometimes that vegetables, you know, is telling you that there was a softness to it. Yeah, you did pick up on the honey. There is some honey in this one, as you can see in the tasty notes and the aroma notes. And so you're you're picking up on the notes. And sometimes the mash bill is difficult to pick up on. You don't see a lot of hundred percent wheat wheats out there because they're hard to make. Mm. And Ryan Winter, um, who started this company out in San Clemente, um, I met him because my dad lives out there and I was visiting. And really, we wanted to beta test with a distillery, like the process of what went into it to make sure that we were being fair to them um, throughout the process and making sure it worked with all of our price points and just the the logistics and the legality of all the stuff we had to go through in order to make this whole thing happen. And he apprenticed up at Dry Fly in Washington, um, oh, yeah. you know, also makes a well-known wheat whiskey and, you know, I mean, your, your Pappy lines, uh, Larceny. I mean, there's some good wheats obviously out that, that are out there, your Wellers. Um, and, and Ryan's doing some stuff. He's working on some older age statements, but this was really popular in our March lineup. This was maybe one of the more popular bottles that people ordered. And I, we call it a summer sipper. We think it's really easy to drink. It's really mellow on the palate. And we've got into some higher proof stuff in some of our other lineups. We we sometimes build upon that. I think it's hard to figure out the way that we position brands in the lineup. Sometimes that's the biggest debate that we have. This guy's a craftsman. He's making some good stuff. So once again, this is this is called Drift Distillery from San Clemente. Uh, Brad, I'm I'm into sample three here. I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to say this is our rye, and it has a very bourbony character for being a rye. It kind of reminds me of that MGP barrel we picked from uh from Western Reserve in that way. Uh I I don't I could be wrong, but this is just striking me as a very caramel and brown sugar forward rye. So that's interesting. I am getting like a black licorice note on this one. It's a little bit more earthy for me. Uh there there is a little bit of that caramel brown sugar sweetness. I can see but where I'm, you're getting like some anise on this too. Like, yeah. That, yep. But again, like that, I mean, that could be maltiness, but that could also be rye. Like we've gotten that on both of those before. I mean, you guys are, you're, you're, oh, that's, you're making that's some really good comments about this. Yeah. That, you know, I mean, and you, you can kind of do, so we're heading towards a rye and this is probably, you know, you get these, these guys that are like, I only drink bourbon. This one changed a lot of people's minds. This is a rye out of Columbus, Ohio. Hey, uh, yes, Middle West. Middle West. Middle Hell West yeah. Fire. That's my I mean, hometown, baby. They are awesome. I'll Dude. tell you, they sent us talk about good people and good whiskey, Middle West. Um, everything they make is phenomenal. We debated what was going to be in the lineup because they had so many good products. And, and, and yeah. I shouldn't even say good. I mean, exceptional. Well, this this dark pumpernickel, I remember seeing it on a few lists as like the top whiskey from the state of Ohio. Yeah. Fred Minnick put it. At his best rye, I think, of this year, yeah, the yeah, Ascot, Ascot Awards. Ascot Awards. And, uh, yes. and I know that he knows about us. I think that he heard about this and he jumped on what we were doing. But uh, <laughs> I I don't know. But uh, to talk to his manager and see if that was a factor. But, yeah, I mean, I, I just thought the word pumpernickel sounded cool. That means that they left the, the husk on, um, you know, of the, of the actual rye when they distilled it. And, yeah, I mean, this, this is a smooth... Um, I always have a bottle of this at my house because if you want to pour some for somebody and have them be really impressed with, I mean, just how complex this rye is. And yeah, I'm a, I'm a rye guy. I'm a bur- I, I like a little bit of everything, but this is maybe one of my favorite go-to whiskeys. Bobby, I think you and I might have a pretty similar palate because uh, I'm the same way, man. I like all whiskeys, but ryes just consistently draw me in. That's so funny you guys say that because I just poured sample D out into my glass and I'm like, oh, this is my jam. Like (laughs) this smells like peanut butter and maple syrup on top of a waffle. And I'm like, hell yeah. Again, I don't know if you have two bourbons in here. Judging by your comments earlier, I'm going to guess that this is not a bourbon. But if it's not a bourbon, then maybe it's like a corn whiskey or something because this like it smells like the most decadent bourbon I can imagine. Like your favorite whiskey, mellow corn. <laughs> mellow corn. <laughs> DSP number one in Kentucky. Yeah, Bob, this is hands down the most decadent of the four options. Uh, when I think about a whiskey having caramel on the nose, this is what I think about. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I think it's easy to throw caramel around as as a tasting or a nosing note. When in all reality, it's just kind of, you know, sweet and it might just be like a corn <laughs> sweetness or something. Yeah. This is like decadent caramel. 
And I definitely get like roasted peanuts on the very back of it, though. Like yeah. it just it's yeah. like it's like you folded. It's like caramel corn that has peanuts in it. Mm hmm. Yeah, I was going to say it It gives me almost like a like a Boy Scout popcorn, like like really high end caramel popcorn with like a peanut butter drizzle over yeah. it that I'm like super digging and I, I'm still just nosing it. Well, before we get to the reveal, I did just take a sip and Brad, I want you to sip, you know, cause, so I can spoil what I think here. But like the way the alcohol hits my palate on this is almost effervescent. Like it almost has a bubbly soda type quality to it. This is it's like drinking something that's spiked <laughs> like, a, like a rum and Coke or a, a Jack and Coke or something like that. But man, oh, man, this thing is fantastic. I yeah. think this is definitely the highest proof one we've had. Yeah, I'm going to guess it's like a bottle and bond area mm. around 100, maybe 105, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a bubblegum quality to it uh, of flavor on the palate that I really love. The caramel kind of backs off a little bit from the nose. It's mm -hmm. not quite as decadent. And it's, uh, yeah, effervescent. That's a really good word. It It is lighter. Do you, it's a lot lighter body than I expected it to be. Do you remember when we picked our watershed barrel and our friend Ann Dimmick said that she had nicknamed one of the barrels juicy fruit because it this tasted like juicy fruit. This tastes like juicy fruit gum. Bro, if this is a watershed barrel, then that would be awesome. That... <laughs> <laughs> like, I, would, I would feel so accomplished. <laughs> also, two whiskeys from Columbus would be pretty. Impressive. That would be cool. Wow. Well, you guys are like, you know, what's interesting. You guys started off like a little off the mark and the guesses and you were a little down in the dumps. You guys are, are really humming and drumming now. <laughs> and, and I mean, I, I call this one, you're right. This is a bourbon. I'll reveal it in a second. And I call this kind of the everlasting gobstopper. The schnozberries taste like no, schnozberries no, 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 no. where there's this, you know, there's this, yeah, we are the music makers and we are the dreamers of dreams. And there's this element of this particular whiskey farmer. This is a true grain of glass, glass distiller. This is somebody that you haven't heard of. And it evolves like the smell, the taste, the long finish, yeah. the burn. This isn't, this is the decadent perfect whiskey. And we, when we did a blind tasting, I threw a curveball in. Um, I put a bottle of a $400 bottle of old Carter in the lineup. And um, this, beat out old Carter in a blind tasting wow. amongst everybody. Um, and it crushed and nobody had heard of this brand. They went on to win massive blind tasting competitions. They're just really kind of hitting the map. And you're going to hear about these guys a lot in the future. This is Corbin cash out of oh, Atwater. Yeah. Okay. Corbin cash. I mean, when we were talking to them a year ago, um, I don't think anybody had heard of these guys and, you know, we had a friend that that started working there and there's only four employees at the company. And um, David Souza, who uh, his last name sounds like tequila. And the first day that his uh, he's the grandson of Portuguese immigrants. And the first mm -hmm. day that his whiskey still produced whiskey, you know, that the water broke on his baby. His wife's water actually broke at the same time wow. on his other baby. <laughs> and uh, he named his son Corbin Cash. And that became the name of the distillery. Um, and so, you know, talk about somebody that, you know, they he's an almond farmer and a sweet potato farmer. And he sources grain from his neighbor for his whiskey. And, and this just blew people's minds. I mean, this is a bottle that... There's not a lot of them left. You know, we started to make other SKUs getting popular, but whiskey takes time, right? And uh, this is a bottle in the secondary market that's going for a lot more than what we sell it for. And we're very proud. And, you know, we don't make really money from bottle sales. That sounds ridiculous. But, you know, what happens is we have fulfillment partners. We create shipping discounts and, and you know, we get the wholesale for what it is. And what happens is um, we, we usually break even on most bottles and it's meant to be a uh, benefit the distiller, obviously our fulfillment partners and our subscribers. And, and like I said, access to these brands, um, you, you know, that this is a craft bottle. Cause when you try to take the wax off that top, you got to get a knife out because that <laughs> ribbon is not going to, you got to get some fire. You got to put a blowtorch to it or something. And, and, uh, yeah, we're massive. Anything that Corbin cash makes when I was there, um, that his new manager discovered there were 10 barrels that were supposed to be four year that they forgot about for six years. Whoa, and so they have, go. yeah, I'm like, dude, like, can you just put like three cases aside for me? Yeah, right. uh, <laughs> and, and uh, I just want to try it. I can't imagine this is a four year and you're right. Yeah. That's 106 proof. 
And it, I mean, this is a nuanced, complex, um, this blew a lot of people's minds and people ordered the heck out of this bottle. Yeah. And um, we're super proud that they were in our lineup. And um, every lineup's, I, I can't really necessarily say it's gotten better. Everybody in our lineup is kind of like our baby. We're big fans of everybody that's in our lineup. But yeah, December is shaping up to be nuts. And we actually have some... Uh, big people that are um, helping pick that that we can't announce just yet but every lineup's getting a little bit crazier and crazier and now that we're uh, becoming more established um it's it's becoming easier to talk to these brands or get access to these brands mm -hmm. we, we have a lot of love for everybody that we mentioned you know 10th mountain drift middle west and corbin cash because they believed in us before we even had a website before we <laughs> you know they they were like this sounds really cool and and um and yeah we tried you know probably and talked to 60 distillers just to figure out the first couple lineups so it's not just anybody that would talk to us and now we're I mean, I'm looking at a shelf that's got 500 bottles on it right now. And um, it's that cool part of the job where we get to try all these cool things. And I think what's unfortunate, sometimes we talk to great people and we don't like their whiskey. And in the better world, everybody in this lineup, great whiskey, great people. It's mm -hmm. the best of both worlds. And we're lucky to have them in our lineup. Well, I got to well, say, uh, Brad, I mean, I'm sorry to interrupt you, man. This is by far the best whiskey we've had in this lineup. Like, And I liked all the other three, but maybe just my palate. This blew me away. And yeah, Corbin Cash, I got to I got to excoriate you for a minute here. You got to answer my messages on Instagram. I want to have you on the podcast. And now that I've had your whiskey, <laughs> please. I love it. It's really good. Please come on our show. Please send us more whiskey, Corbin Cash. I'll call David tomorrow. I'll, I'm, he'll, he'll come on. Yeah, man. Rake I mean, him over the coals I'm, a little bit. No, I mean, he's he's <laughs> you look, he, he is as old school as as you can get. And I mean, this particular whiskey, he was making it to, to create a blend. And um, one of the reps from Southern, uh, a massive distributor was there. He's like, he tried. It. He's like, what are you doing with this? He's like, oh, I'm going I'm to blend it. He's like, no, you're not. Yeah. This is like, <laughs> this is, we have located pure fire and this yeah. needs to be, um, you know, something special. And it is, it's something special. Uh, but yeah, I'll reach out to David. He'll come on the show. No problem. Oh, yeah. Let's get him on. Well, Bobby, I mean, we, we're sitting down with you now and this has been an incredible experience. Brad, I can't speak highly enough of this. Yeah. Like, you know, the, I think the fun thing again is like, it brings you back down to earth a little bit. Like we've tried how many hundreds of whiskeys and I still was, I whiffed mm -hmm. on at least one of these. Right. Yep. But I think it's really cool to have a subscription box where you have to play the game every three months. And like, yep. it's just, it makes my, it, it makes me a little bit sharper in terms of like how I, uh, how discerning my palate is, but it's also just fun. Like it gets back yeah. to the root of why we love whiskey. It's fun as hell. Yeah. Well, and, and let's be really honest. We don't just drink whiskey by ourselves. How awesome is it going to be when you and your, you know, three to five other buddies all get a subscription, you all get a box in the mail, and then you guys just sit down for a really fun night of making fun of each other for your terrible tasting notes and drinking whiskey together and shooting the breeze, and you get to do it every quarter. I, we've seen a lot of different whiskey companies come through the door. This is by far one of the most unique and awesome experiences I think I've had with whiskey. So, well, and once guys, again, like we're we're not getting paid for this. We're not getting a cut of anything. We're not like there's no affiliate link we're sending you to. This is just a product that we happen to stumble upon that we obviously now having walked through it. I believe in this. Like I believe in this product. This is really really cool. I mean, I know they're preparing for their December release, so this would make an incredible Christmas gift for somebody. Mm -hmm. Bobby, if you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit of the details as far as like what would a quarterly subscription run you? Like what are what are the rates on this? Uh first of all, I'm I'm humbled of all the kind of words that you guys uh, objectively said about this. Absolutely, this is awesome. Man. And this is, you know, whenever you you, you start a company and um I could tell you many things about the <laughs> you know, the growing pains that come with any startup. Um, you know, I'm hoping down the road we can come on again and talk about John Hughes movies and Kubrick movies and, yes. and films that have influenced and and all the other stuff. And we can drink awesome whiskey and, and do another long form of the tastings of uh, other lineups that we're doing. And and just so everyone knows, I did create a specific code just for your listeners, Film 15. It gets 15% off of any of the uh, whiskey boxes in our store. And, um, you know, I limited it to a certain amount. Um, the reality is, is putting other people's whiskey in these bottles is a lengthy 
and difficult process. I wish it was like just me. I'm just born. I just got a funnel and some bottles and I'm just sending stuff out. And it's <laughs> there's there's like 10 different partnerships involved in order to make this happen. And we're lucky to have those partnerships. So if you go to our site uh, quarterly, it, it, it is uh, $59.99. And um, these, it's seasonal quarterly. So if you go in, we, we probably have about 20 September boxes left. So if you go on and you order now and you want the September box, we'll get you a box now. The next one ships out December 15th. And as you mentioned, great whiskey is meant to be shared, right? So everybody gets that box at the exact same time. And that lineup never happens again. When we, we talk to craft distillers, we put them um, into the bottles and we have a limited amount of inventory. So we can't just sit there on a bunch of inventory and send it out whenever we want. So at some point, we're going to reach a cap on how many people can actually be in this exclusive club. Annual, it's $200. And, you know, the for instance, the, the shipping is $50 and that breaks down to $12.50 a box. Um, the reality is it costs more than that and compartmentalizing shipping costs with everything. Um, shipping alcohol with signatures is pretty pricey um, and and having fulfillment partners that can get us in all these states. Um, but, you know, you get to try things you never be able to try. And once again, I mean, I think access, you know, that bottle of Corbin cash, that's a hundred dollar bottle. Mm -hmm. um, I know in states outside of California, it's going for, for two or three times that. And um, really, you know, supporting and showcasing these small craft distillers that uh, put it up against your Wellers, put it up against your, as we did, the old Carters, put it up against your Mictors. Um, you're going to you're gonna be surprised that some of the best whiskey you've never tried is in these boxes. Yeah, I was going to say, if I'm just being honest, Bobby, my brain immediately went to how much am I paying per pour? And with 16 bottles coming your way, you're paying $12.50 per pour. And I have to say, to have whiskey shipped to you, like this isn't going to the bar and getting a pour of whiskey. Like to have whiskey shipped to you at your house where you can enjoy it with your friends, $200 is a freaking steal. I genuinely in my brain was thinking like, oh, like a year of this is going to be three or $400 easy. Like I can't imagine how they could make it cost any less than that. You got uh, this box that you can put your weed in there too. So exactly. Don't forget about that, you know. But, but when you know the, the one thing that pricing, when people are, some people will be like, "Wait, I'm paying, you know, fifty dollars for four doubles," and it's like, "Well, wait a minute, you got to back up." You know, you, you just spent you just spent forty dollars on on one drink at the bar on one double, mm -hmm. and so we all kind of compartmentalize pricing in a certain way and we don't have massive margins. And when people that are in the club, they go, you should be charging more. And the problem with that is we can't say that we're supporting small American businesses and then price out the middle class. Mm -hmm. So the fact that people that aren't in the club that are being like, this seems pricing people that are in the club are saying you should charge more tells us that we're in where we should be. Um, and there's a lot of thought that kind of went into that. And yeah, if you order, you know, a full bottle of this, I guarantee you the shipping is going to cost $22 and we have a, a flat rate that's much lower than that. Mm -hmm. So, um, like I said, we don't care about bottle sales, support these. Hey, if you can find a bottle cheaper, um, go visit the distillery, go get it in another way and not have to pay for shipping um, or find another way to get it. The fact that you discovered them and you're not supporting them in another capacity, that's a win for us. Well, I think that's about all that needs to be said. This has been Bobby DeMars, uh, filmmaker, whiskey boss, all around good guy, gentleman and scholar. Bobby, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, my pleasure. I look forward to coming on and I want to talk some movies. Oh, we will. I want yeah. to drink some whiskey. And, <laughs> Listen, you said so. this box is like this. You can come on and talk about anything you want. You could tell us exactly <laughs> how much weed is stored in your boxes at your house. <laughs> we are in California. That's we true. are in California. <laughs> and now we can talk about this. Yeah, it's no longer going to be a Schedule 1 drug. I mean, join us in December when Bobby launches his new venture, Blind Strains, where he just sends four different strains, <laughs> strains of weed in the mail. <laughs> Maybe some peyote in there. Yeah. It's blind. We don't know. All right, everybody. This has been Bobby DeMars. We will be back on Monday with another regularly scheduled episode. But before I sign off, reminder, if you want to get a box of blind barrels, go to their website, use code FILM15 for 15% off your subscription. We've already talked about what a steal it is. You're going to add 15% off on top of that. So please support these guys because this is a phenomenal box. On behalf of Blind Barrels, on behalf of the Film and Whiskey Podcast, I'm Bob Book. I'm Brad G. 
and we'll see you next time.